Well, welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have Harley Schlanger. Harley, uh, the I heard an interesting comment. I want to start off the show with this. One of my other hosts called me back and said, you've got to really control Tim Alexander. He made the statement that uh, this really isn't a march toward World War III where the Americas, America and the EU support the resurrection of a Nazi regime in Western Ukraine, and this isn't a form of... Uh, brinkmanship that's going to bring us toward World War III. And I have to very strongly and very vociferously differ. This is the worst geopolitical move since the Archduke Ferdinand uh, assassination that started World War I. This is the kind of stuff that, you know, do you want a, a not a pseudo or neo-Nazi state, but a really hardcore Nazi state on the border of Russia that controls the oil and gas through there and also controls the Black Sea Fleet able to access from Russia. You want to pen Russia in in this state, uh, state of affairs. This is not good. And I honestly think whether it takes two years or five years or ten years, if this is let to be and the American continues to inflame the situation, it will cause World War III. This is, if in any way, even worse than the situation in the Middle East and even worse than the attention to, uh, ten, attention to try to do regime change in Venezuela with Maduro. This is the worst possible situation that's happened in many decades. Well, I, I think you have to, the reason it is the worst is you have to put all those things together. There's a geopolitical offensive by the Western financial powers, which is, which is operating not only against Russia and China, but against the sovereign interests of the United States. The, the, other, th the other thing that they said was that they, all the wars and their outcomes are scripted. Let me tell you, they like to give the impression, the globalists, the satanic maniacs that they have control, they've got control of nothing, not even their bowel movements. The fact is that these globalist maniacs want to tell each other they're controlled, that they're the prescient super race. They aren't. They're not in control of the economy, which is flying apart. They're not in control of military or communications. They want the kill switch, but if they kill the Internet, they'll cause an international immediate move, just like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are rising like daisies in the, in the morning rain. It's ridiculous. If the globalists well, think that they're going to control the population and that they control the outcomes of wars, I have a bridge on the moon for you. It just isn't going to happen. They don't control well, they, anything. The, the people you're talking about pacify Iraq, that we could get so-called democracy in Afghanistan, that you could overthrow Assad easily in Syria. The right. miscalculation, they also, look, they also thought that they could use World War I as a quick effort to defeat the power of Germany, and yet that lasted four years. They thought they could put Hitler in power in Germany and that he would march east and take care of the Soviet Union, and that would be that. They've made miscalculation after miscalculation. They also think that bailing out the banks will solve the financial crisis. So these are people who have miscalculated over and over and over because history doesn't operate according to statistical correlations. Well, also now, they have models that take a lot of the uh, parameters that are multidimensional out of the equation. Uh, they have their own a priori assumptions about how things work in previous theories. Well, that's, that's, the most important, that's the most important thing. They operate from the standpoint of past experience, although what they leave out in that is the fact that past experience should tell you that things do go in a nonlinear direction. They never go according to plan. And the important thing on this is that the fact that there hasn't been a war already over Ukraine doesn't mean that the takeover by the so-called opposition has settled things. It means Putin is not an idiot who's going to rush into some kind of confrontation because he's been provoked. The Russians are very... Uh, clearly evaluating what their next move will be. They're not going to allow themselves to be provoked, but don't think for a minute that they're going to sit back and let things go uh, as they, they're going. Well, we, we see the reality now. The very first action the so-called parliament did was to declare that all Russian-speaking citizens are no longer citizens and that there's no single language which is Ukrainian. The very reality is that one-third of the population are almost exclusively Russian speakers. It's ridiculous. It's like well, trying to say uh, in Canada that you're going to outlaw French speaking in Canada. Come on. Uh, it, just like in, in Hispanic speaking in America where a huge chunk of the population are Hispanic and are bilingual. You know, it's well, you not know, reality. The lesson, the lesson for any country looking at Ukraine 
is that you can't trust the EU and the United States because supposedly they made an agreement that would uh, set up elections for the end of this year that would a- allow for a time of negotiations. And instead, they turned power over to armed thugs with the right sector and the Svoboda party who are intimidating the parliamentarians. Uh, if you're part of Yanukovych's party and you were elected in a fair election, you're now considered a war criminal. Even if you had nothing to do with the, the secret police and the, the police firing and getting fired at in, in the crowds. So the whole situation has, has spiraled into a new level of, of uncontrollable. And even the Financial Times bill, which last week was saying, this is great, the Russians are going to get hit in the stomach, Ukraine's going to be overthrown. They had an editorial yesterday saying, not so fast, this is not time for triumphalism, because the extremists seem to have the upper hand. Well, what, uh, uh, listen to it this way. Even Saudi Arabia pulled finances of the... Of the, uh, the, the uh, Muslim terrorists that were in power by last year and before they were actually taken out of power and uh, America still didn't learn their lesson. This even Saudi Arabia did and yet we still continue to say okay now because there's been a, a change in government and a four party including the, the, the uh, Mary and I, including the Egyptian Christians uh, and uh, the Muslims, the moderate Muslims, the military etc all came together and said we're gonna turf this uh, Muslim Brotherhood, and they outlawed them because they were terrorists. And yet Obama continues to support them, withdrew money from the military support for Egypt, which was an ally and was going to fulfill the Egyptian-Israeli treaty. And now Russia waltzes in with al-Sisi, and he's there with $3 billion of Russian armaments ready to make a deal. And we just let him walk right in. let's, Let's go one step further. That even as all this is going on, Obama is continuing to push in Syria. He's continuing to push for an aggressive posture in China. And look, what I would say to someone who says, we didn't have nuclear war, you know, calm your, pull your jets, don't worry about it. That the way wars break out are almost always not planned. They, well, they break out in but, different ways. But if and, you actually do a research, you find step by step, like today, I have a free from Fox News. Putin reportedly orders test of troops combat readiness and ten, to, and ten, amid tensions in Ukraine. Putin's making little tiny baby steps toward I, I, basically showing, I mean business. Well, We're not going to have a civil also, war in the country. We're not going to have a civil war. We're not going to cut off the gas and pipe, oil pipelines. We're not going to have a blockade of the Crimean by a Western Ukraine. This is the kind of things that happen, and even the Tartars are fighting Putin. They're stupid. They're going to get crushed by the Russian forces down in the Crimea. And you have to be very careful of of the media, including rumors, because there was a rumor yesterday that 20,000 Russian troops were moving to Sevastopol, and it turned out it was one ship with 200 sailors. No, no, but but that's, that's true, but what they're doing is... They're getting ready on the border, Russian border, with Ukraine. No, they are. I'm I'm, I'm just saying that what in a volatile situation like this, the worst thing would be to say, well, look, no war happened, the Russians didn't start firing anything, so don't exaggerate the danger. The danger, as I said at the beginning, is not just Ukraine. Ukraine is the most sensitive provocation, but... Every one of these other instances, including Thailand, including North Korea, including Venezuela, including what's happening throughout the Middle East, is part of an overall war geometry. And unless we march back from it, and the only way to march back from it is to get Obama, who's a puppet of the financial interests that want to push Russia to the brink. We've got to get Obama out. Now, the good news right before the break is that the latest poll in Texas shows that Keisha Rogers is leading the Democratic Senate uh, primary race. Wow. We helped her, I hope. And when she's back on Monday, she needs to win. She's brilliant. She's got answers. She's positive. She has a dialogue with the people for the future. She's against anything which is against the American people. And 
our nation and our do constitution. Do you feel the aches and pains of your age? Do you often feel tired? So yeah, so she needs to be elected. And, and then, of course, once she gets in there, she can put all kinds of motions forward in the Senate and start a dialogue that'll that'll not just clean up the Democratic Party, but the government in general, and get rid of a lot of the corruption that's going on. Because the whole system is a system of laws and corruption. You know? Well, and, and also, it's based on playing off the American people as a bunch of stupid idiots. Look, the San Antonio Express News, the main paper in the ninth largest city in the country, page one, you can look and is your vote for Keisha or Keisha, with the second Keisha being the singer? And they're saying that the only reason people are supporting Keisha Rogers is her name is the same as Keisha the singer. Oh, really? You know, they, they really think that people are insulting. Stupid. Yeah, well, yeah. Not only, it's also insulting. It's like, you know, uh, you, you know, if you're going to have a valid reason to attack a candidate, state that reason. But for them to Making pretend the right that they are, is a you know, to irrational, are we going to see it's pretty, growth? pretty nasty, is isn't it? Or or well, and, and the person I met with just now resources. is we trying to get the, the guy who's second in the race to debate Keisha, uh, just the two of them, since they're the front runners, and he said he, he won't even answer, and this is a group he offered uh, $10,000 to to get out the vote. They said, we don't want your money, we want you to answer questions in a debate with Keisha. And he won't do it. Book, title 10 reasons of course. Goal, discussing costs, benefits, so what you're saying, they don't want to discuss the issues. Weights and measures. If he doesn't get elected, you may not. Yeah. Welcome back. And Harley, you can only be here another segment, so let's roll in the rest of the important news. Keisha's a major story, as you mentioned. If she wins the Democratic primary, even if she's not elected, it'll be a shot heard around the world that uh, people that are shy, gun shy of impeachment, both Republicans and maybe some Democrats, they'll start moving on it because if you want to call it the edge of the wedge, the fulcrum point for all these evil policies of bankers is Obama. He is a perfect sock puppet for George Soros. I call him Papa Geppetto Soros. And the global banksters are using these multiple regime changes and marching forward on policies that are bringing us to the brink of World War III. First, the economic World War III, which happens before every major war. Uh, then the, uh, the other types of warfare that's going on, weather warfare, which we're having effects here in North America, and just stupid policies like, you know, you're, you're, not, you're allowing, for example, hydrofracking with chemicals that destroy the aquifer, but you won't allow the XL pipeline. Well, Bill, let me, let me just summarize quickly the, the situation here. The University of Texas poll shows Keisha with a 35 to 27 percent lead over a multimillionaire who's spending millions of dollars. And this has led to a complete panic. First of all, the media internationally is covering it. The Daily Mail had a page one story on it. Slate magazine, uh, Politico, it's the lead story today in the San Antonio Express News, Dallas Morning News, Austin American Statesman. And what they're mostly saying is how could this happen? How could an anti-Obama Democrat be leading the Democratic primary race? Yeah. Now, at the same time, the Obama team is putting out the word, shut it down. They're telling the Texas Democrats, don't let her appear at any events. She went to an event last night where they told her she couldn't speak, even though many of the people there said they supported her. So, right. and I've, from the very beginning, I've said this. The more they make her the issue and Obama the issue, the better right. it is for her campaign, because Obama is not beloved among Texas Democrats. He's hated. People want well, him out. Hated. He's a liability now. In fact, they, they want his money, but they don't want him to campaign because he's so noxious. He's so That's narcissistic. Right. And, they, and he's the smartest man in the room all the time, which means he doesn't even listen to his advisors. Him, yeah, yeah, you have to ask him, and all of a sudden he, yeah. he's got this Swami hat on, and even he has no experience, training, or education, or intelligence. He always thinks he knows better, and it's crazy. Well, and here's, here's the important thing, that what Keisha's saying is he should be impeached because he's putting us on the brink of war, he's carrying out policies in the, the supposedly as drought relief, which have nothing to do with producing water, but have everything to do with worsening the conditions by focusing on the fraud of global warming. He's continuing to bail out banks and protect the swindlers who run the banks, 
and he's continuing to spy on Americans and claim the right to kill Americans without a judicial proceeding. Exactly. Right drone. now, he actually he says, "I kill. I'm really good at killing." On the Tuesday morning drone sessions, when he goes to the Situation Room, uh, this man is literally mentally imbalanced, and we don't know him within miles, let alone feet, of the well, nuclear so football. So what, what Keisha is saying is that for the country to move ahead and address the serious issues such as Glass-Steagall, North American Water and Power Alliance, and so on, you've got to get Obama out first. Now, what we're finding is right below the surface, real anger in the population. In many cases, they don't know who to be angry at. Are they angry at the government, the Democrats, the Republicans, all politicians, their mother-in-law? There's just a lot of anger. But when you have a leader who comes forward and says, here's what we can do, here's what I intend to do, and then gives you a very straight, clear picture. She's right. getting support for that. That's right. why she's doing well in the polls. She's and showing love for her fellow citizens with leading and having a positive policy toward Americans and people first. Now, the important thing is that the election is next Tuesday. That's the reason I have to jump off quickly, because I'm in San Antonio for some meetings today. Right. But we need the support of your listeners, anyone who lives in Texas or has friends in Texas. Let me just tell you something. I don't care if you're a Republican. If a Republican wants to get Obama out, go into the Democratic primary and vote for Keisha. Right. That will deliver a message to every one of these cowards in Congress that in Texas, the, the Democratic Party statewide wants Obama out. If Keisha wins or comes in first in the, the primary, it will send the message that it's okay to go ahead and fight against Obama. There are a lot of people, as you said during the break, in both parties, in the Congress, who realize Obama's a danger to the country. But because of fear, because of corruption, because of uh, uh, greed, they're not doing anything. If we show them that the voters will vote for a clarion call to remove Obama, it will put that miles ahead in the congressional agenda. And it only takes one congressman to file a bill of impeachment to get things going. Right. So it's, and once it's, it does, it'll be an avalanche because there's so many issues that could be there, there. And they, by the way, they tried to poison the process with Bill Clinton so that, that future Democrat and Republican wouldn't try to go through the impeachment process. That's right. This needs to be stay on track to deal with issues like Benghazi, Libya, the War Powers Act, separation of powers. Well, there's, there's more than abuse. enough material. More and, than and by the way, there, impeachable. there's more executive orders from previous presidents that also needs to be tamed. So for future presidents, but this one has basically abused the process where it's not the it's the kind of content of the executive order and it's the attitude by which it's imposed that's what's well, dangerous there's, there's ample grounds for impeachment, but we need to give some sense of, of the power of the people when they can move, so I'm asking your listeners today if you, have, if you live in Texas or you know people in Texas, get them to vote for Keisha Rogers for U.S. Senate in the Democratic primary next Tuesday, March 4th. Help us win this fight. And if you know some people or you have some ideas, you can call my office and we'll talk to you about it. That's 800-922-2907. 800-922-2907. And, you know, get into this fight right now. This is the way we can change the direction of the world from war and economic collapse and drought emergencies to actually rebuilding. And that's what Keisha's yeah. doing with her campaign. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. And I'm really hoping that she'll get in. If she gets in as a senator, this will be like a, how can I say, you know when you bomb a house to try to get rid of pests? This will be like bombing the political house of not only the Democratic Party, but both parties, the federal government, and also shake up the state governments to get real again. Well, uh, we also, of, it will yeah. also say to the American people that you still have a voice. Right. Because you don't have a voice in the existing parties unless you line up with bags of money the way Wall Street does. But if we can show without much money, we can beat a millionaire who's spending millions, has the full support of the national party and the state party and the media, and we can still beat him. And remember, Keisha has won two Democratic primaries. This time, it's statewide and will have an enormous impact. 
Oh, man. That's going to be an amazing story. We're going to continue with Keisha on Monday. Thank you, Herney, for popping in. We'll continue with open lines on geopolitical and other issues. 800-259-5791. 800-259-5791. And we'll be back in just a moment after this break. 